Recording in progress. I can't hear you guys. I just messaged Dan and it looks like he got my message and it looks like they can hear us. I can hear we, you. But we can't hear the auditorium. Correct. Right. I can hear you guys, but I can't hear the auditorium either. This is Barbara. I think the town of Newton needs to be unmuted. Are we going to have a quorum physically present? We have a quorum physically present. Oh, we can hear you. Great. Yes. Good. Seth. Here we go. But we have an echo now. Kevin thinks they can now hear us. <laughs> they can hear us, um, but there's an echo now. Is that any better? Um, no. Yeah, we're getting the echo from here. It's probably Jim's microphone. Jim, could you mute your microphone and see if that helps? I will as soon as Zoom it starts responding. There it goes. Okay, that should be good. Any better? No. Okay. Might be that one over there, I think. Is that better? Go. Is that any better? No. Nope. No, I think it is. What about yeah, this? Is it? Yeah. It's better. Yeah. Better? There yep. we go. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> so welcome everybody. And first on the agenda is Joseph and Diane Anair of 50 Pond Street, which is requesting a non-binding preliminary con consultation on a possible subdivision of their property. The property is referenced as tax map five, block four, lot one. And um, this evening, Mr. Um, Dennis Funtal. handed us uh, a copy of the paperwork. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, like you said, 50 Pond Street, we have Joe and Diana with us tonight and the daughter, Allie. And again, my name's Dennis Quintal. I'm a civil engineer. I work in town here, my office above the police station. And so uh, they took a look at their property and were notified uh, a while ago um, that their taxes were going up because uh, they, the assessor deemed that they had land enough for a possible subdivision. And so they would be in tax more. So they decided, well, perhaps we ought to prove that. And so a year or so ago, they hired a surveyor to survey the property to make sure they had enough land. Well, as it turns out, they do have enough land to create a separate lot. And as you show, seen here, as you see here, uh, one lot is 66,000 square feet. Uh, actually, both lots are, are over 66,000 square feet. Um, so the next step would be uh, to take a look at uh, wetlands and see where the wetland line is. So I was asked at that point in time to flag the wetlands and most of the wetlands are 
uh, in the back of the lot behind Pond Street. The uh, uplands were pretty, supposed to be pretty good soil according to the uh, uh, Soil Conservation Service being uh, Windsor type, 26A Windsor type soil. We did test pits on the lot that's proposed um, and found, you can see the test pit data at the top to be gravelly core sand. Uh, and so it's ideal for drainage purposes. And so each lot has uh, areas for their septic system, wells, access from the, the roadway. And so at that point in time, we looked at uh, trying to meet the requirements for uh, the lot size by soil type. So we hired Gove Environmental to conduct a high intensity soil map of the property. And that's what the numbers 6361BH, uh, 411BH, uh, and 511BH, those are the soil types. And at the bottom, <coughs> we did the um, calculations for being able to uh, evaluate whether each of these lots can uh, meet a requirement for being 100%, having 100% uh, soil type. So what we found out that uh, the parent lot, uh, lot 541, uh, comes out to be 0.9, 90% of a lot, and the proposed additional lot uh, winds up being 0.83, 83% of a lot. So looking at it from that point of view, we were wondering whether we should proceed or whether we shouldn't proceed. And we thought the best thing to do before we spend money on notifying abutters and a whole new application and sending it for a public hearing, uh, we did meet with Jennifer Rowden and talk to her about this. And she, she suggested that we do what, just what we're doing tonight, is coming before the board, non-binding discussion, and having a discussion about the possibility of submitting this application and uh, seeing if it's worthwhile to do that with the understanding that uh, we know we'd have to submit a waiver for uh, the lot size requirements. Um, if you drive down Pond Street, you will find that their house uh, at 50 Pond Street is a beautiful home, well maintained. Uh, their intention is to build a, a, a home for their daughter in the near future and uh, it would enhance the town um, to have uh, a nice looking lot and uh, uh, um, hopefully be able to uh, get the waiver for the lot size by soil type. So one of the other things that uh, we've kind of done with the state, uh, I've done some septic designs down in in uh, Baku's Grove, Country Pond area, when we're looking for lot size calculations and receiving soil for septic systems, we, uh, 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 we, s we send a, a request uh, along with our application for uh, including the receiving soils that are basically under the road in front of the lot. So typically what we did, we looked at the town roads, in the town road right away is deals with the surface uh, of the road and the drainage, but the soil underneath the road is basically like a receiving soil for any uh, water treatment or whatever. So we've been able to include that in our calculations uh, for some of the applications we've done with the state. Um, so if we were to do that, we'd get closer to the 100% lot area. Not that that it's not in your regulations, and I understand that, but we're talking about trying to obtain a waiver, and I just don't really know what your thoughts are on waivers for this type. Uh, we don't really un understand, or I don't think uh, Jennifer can remember if this request for a waiver has been before you board members in the, in the past, but perhaps a discussion, uh, again, non-binding, uh, it would help us to be able to make a determination of whether to follow through with an application or not. And that's really what we'd like to talk about with you tonight. And obviously, we don't want to take a lot of your time, but by all means, your opinions 
uh, are very important to us. Thank you, Mr. Quintel. Um, I'm going to remind the board that this is a conceptual review and that the planning board will not be voting on anything concerning this issue. It is for the prospective applicant to ask his questions before submitting the application. So that being the case, I'm going to uh, ask Jen if she has any comments at this point that she would like to say to the board and to the applicants. Sure, I, I'm going to start my comments with, I actually don't have a copy of the proposal in front of me, but I did meet with Mr. Quintal and the property owners a couple of months ago, and then I met with um, Dennis a few weeks ago about this. Um, the lots in question are very uniform in nature. They Honestly, they look like a house lot. The only thing dimensionally is really that um, soil loading for septic systems. I would never recommend granting this waiver without a condition that it gets state approval, but they have to do that anyway for their septic permit. Um, you know, it, it is a very close waiver, so it's not, in my view, unreasonable to have to consider the waiver if the application were to come before you, everything else being equal. Um, if this didn't have that loyal soil loading issue a little bit, this would be a very straightforward two lot subdivision. Procedurally, what they need to do is submit the waiver. You would have to grant it. This is a non-binding consultation, so anything you discuss this evening has no impact on a future decision or a future board, but to my knowledge, this, app, this waiver has never been asked of the planning board in the past 10 years I've been working with Newton. But that doesn't mean that it isn't reasonable or unreasonable to grant one way or the other. All right, thanks, Jen. Dennis, you have anything to say? Um, I think I pretty much covered everything. No, nope. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Dennis Moran. Dennis Moran. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Thanks, Bob. Um, I have no comments. I think, you know, the applicant or future applicant has done their due diligence, and honestly, I'm, I'm quite happy with them doing everything before coming to us and asking our opinion. So I appreciate it. All right. Anybody else? Any questions? I any have comments? two questions. One's for Ms. Rowden. If we're talk, typing, talking hypotheticals here, we deny them the waiver. Does that give them grounds to go to the assessor and say we can't do the subdivision? Um, so um, if you were to deny the waiver, the subdivision couldn't happen. You couldn't approve the application because it wouldn't be complete. Okay. And they can't meet the regulation. So it, what the assessor does is a whole other process that honestly doesn't influence your decision. If they do get the waiver and they're successful in the subdivision, then it's going to get subdivided, go to the assessor, and they'll get taxed on the second lot. Hey, I have another question based on Mr. Piper's question. This is for you, Jen, sorry. Our regulation, is it based on available soil mapping or is it based on in the field soil mapping? In the field. In the field? Okay. And Mr. Quintel, <clears throat> what you were saying was based on, av <clears throat> sorry, available soil mapping? Uh, just for point of clarification. We did have Gove Environmental um, do an on-site high-intensity soil map, and that's what okay. this line, these lines uh, define, and that's what gives us the calculations. It's based on on-site field field uh, determination. Perfect. Yep. So th th this is based on actual field information, not a, a yes um, estimate based on available mapping. Thank you. So my second question is for the applicant. If you mind coming to the podium just so the, the public can hear you, one of you, does it? Yep, he is fine. State your name, address. Hi, engineer. Um, do you wish your daughter to actually live here? Absolutely. Is this something that you are desiring? This isn't a Absolutely. government forcing, saying, you need to conform to this standard and we're going to make you pay more, do it our way. This is what you want. This is 
is what we want. We've been living on Pond Street for 28 years, and um, our son just bought a house on Durgan Drive, and our daughter lives with us, and she's in nursing school, and she w has always wanted to live in Newton, and when you know we realized that maybe we might have a subdividable lot, she would love nothing more than to live next door and build a house there. <laughs> you know, everything is so expensive for young people to buy a house. And so for her to have an opportunity to have that land, and you know, that would save a, a bundle on the costs. And um, be a girl, so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This is Barbara, I have a comment. Um, I'm just seeing that there doesn't seem to be that much of a difference between what the upland is supposed to be and the amount that can't quite reach that. So I'm thinking in my mind that a waiver, them to ask for a waiver would be reasonable. I agree. Is this, is it, is it 0 0.07 difference between their lot and what this lot would be? That's the difference. Well, point, not zero, point zero 0.07, it's, it's, the calculations are saying. I know, I'm trying to read it, right? It's not cut and dry, but like. Right, for the existing <coughs> lot, it winds up being point 0.9. Right. Lot. So it would what does be that mean? Point nine of a lot. Point nine of a lot. Yes. So they're already built. They're point nine of a lot subdivided. Right. I get what you're saying. So I mean, Different. obviously the line could move a little bit to make that one one point zero, and the other one. But if you drive down the road and you look at this, it isn't like it has wetlands in the front. Right from the street, it all looks like uplands. Yeah. You wouldn't really know it. The wetlands are way in the back. Uh, there's no impact to wetlands. There would never be impact to wetlands here on the property. So uh, having the homes far enough away so there wouldn't be any, any uh, impacts to the wetland is, is certainly a factor you guys have to consider as well. Right. Because if there was wavy lines like this, then I would say, you know, uh, I don't know, there could sure. be problems in the future. But a case like this, it's pretty uniform. It's pretty straight right across. Yeah, you can see that. Actually, the proposed is further away from the wetlands than it is. it's there. It is. So. Anybody else? I guess my, only, my last comment is I, I, I would echo what Barbara said. Yeah, I agree. Um, just in terms of, the, my, my one question is just in terms of the proposed structure, it would be just the single family house. There would not be, as it is on the other lot, a separate garage? No, okay, great. This is Annie. Um, I would agree with what Barbara said, it seems like a relatively minor waiver and a, a good and right thing to do. So um, I'd be inclined to think that it would be a good thing to go forward with. Do the applicants have any questions? No. no. You all set? Which is the input from you guys is certainly important, so. Um, we would hate to go through with a whole application and notify abutters, have the room full of abutters, and meet with you people and say, why didn't you come to us before for a discussion, you know? Right, I mean, this, this, but this, way, this is a good way to do it. it, it it's a safe way to do it, and, and realistically, this is what town uh, planning boards are for. Mm -hmm. It's for planning for the future. Do you right. want a lot here? Would this make sense to have a lot here? Whatever your rules say, whatever your rules say, why did you come up with this calculations for lot size by soil type thing? Is it a good thing? Why does it have to come up to 1.0? Why isn't it 0 0.9? Why isn't it, why wouldn't it be 1.1? I mean, it just comes out to 1.0 and, and anything that's different, you have to ask for a waiver. No matter whatever any of the rules are, you have to ask for a waiver if we don't quite make it. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, well, we thank you for your time and hopefully we'll see you in the future. Do you have any other information you'd like to give me? Does this give you the confidence of going, going through? Absolutely, we'll see you. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time. Thank you for coming. Mr. Quintel, thank you for everything Dennis. that you provided us with.
like this. Mm -hmm. How many more you want? I can make more for you. Um, two. Okay. Well, actually, you're going to be, I'll be bring, bring, bringing, you'd be bringing different plans with the application. So you can actually keep this. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Again. Well, you're in good hands with Mr. Quintel. Yeah. We'll be looking forward to seeing you in the near future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Happy New Year to all of you. Happy New Year. Take care. Thanks, Tim. Yep, have a good night. All right, moving on, board business. Acceptance of minutes of the 2013-22 meeting. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Second. In discussion, I was not there. And I'm listed as there. Excuse me? <laughs> He's listed as there and he was not there. <coughs> I must be getting proof. There's, there's Bruins proof. He wasn't here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so question? if we, it's fine. Just yeah. No. Well, we want to do it properly. Yeah. So with the motion, we'll amend it with the fact that we remove Mr. Guide's name. Oh, oh. From the minutes. I apologize. I actually thought you were there. It's all right. <laughs> Don't ask me why. Mark, you all right with that? Yeah. Yep. Still, we still have the second. Second. If you would be so kind to call the roll. Mr. Moran. Aye. Ms. White. Aye. Ms. Collier. Aye. Mr. Guide. I abstain. <laughs> Mr. Marshawn. Aye. Mr. Lavoie. Aye. Mr. Piper. Aye. Since the abstention goes with the majority, that's unanimous. Thank you very much. We will now go on to the Invest New Hampshire application. And that, Gerald. go ahead, Jen. Oh, that's, that's me. Um, so the Invest New Hampshire application is the housing um, work that we've talked about. The one addition to the process that we have talked about previously, and it might be easier, I can share my screen, but I'll just read it to you um, quickly, is that the steps we had talked about included updating the master plan chapter. Um, because the Invest in Hampshire does require extensive outreach, um, it would be doing a public engagement process during the update to the housing chapter that would be a little bit more intense than what we've done for the land use survey. Um, but that actually gets you richer feedback and there's sufficient funding available to do that. Um, but the second part of the application that we were working on was conducting an audit to evaluate the different barriers and opportunities to Newton's zoning regulations and site plan and subdivision regulations for bringing in more housing or identifying barriers, both good and bad, to developing more housing within the town. And there are some good barriers like environmental protections. Some of the feedback we have gotten on some other applications that we have submitted is a request for us to have more public um, engagement with the audit process itself. So we have modified a couple of the other proposals that we're putting in, and I've done similar for Newton, and I need to run it by you guys, to have, once we do the audit, which will identify the opportunities, barriers, and provide recommendations for amending your zoning regulations, so that includes site plan and subdivision, having public engagement sessions to bring those forward and have discussion with the public about those, and one of the reasons for doing that is to try to build some support for some of the recommendations. And they might be very low um, lifts in some cases. Some of them might be more extensive potentially. But to try and foster a basic sense of understanding about housing and what opportunities there are that are easy, that are a little harder, or that might be a really big lift for Newton to consider. So we have added putting in two public engagement sessions. Um, 
and it's written in to be very um, customizable and we can see where we get a little if we get farther into the process whether those would be in-person sessions online sessions one of both hybrid events um, to really try to reach a wider audience than comes out to public meetings to try and get to uh, more diverse populations, families, elderly, vulnerable populations, people that work during the day or can't come to an evening meeting. So that, that's the biggest um, sort of thing I needed to run by you guys. But if that sounds good, we'll have the entire packet ready for you to potentially sign off on at the January meeting because they, for the housing um, master plan chapter, that is due at the end of January for that grant submittal. So and this, oh. you and okay. your you and your department are getting it all put together, right, Jen? And that's yep. just a matter of the selectmen signing it. Um, it's actually that the planning board can submit it itself. And I mean, if Newton's select board, I'm sorry, Newton's planning board can submit it itself. If the select board also wants a chance to sign off on it, that's perfectly fine. There'll be sufficient time for that. But technically, only the planning board needs to in this oh, case. Okay. Um, and they can also award the grant so that the town doesn't have to deal with the funding. It can be paid directly to the planning commission. So that takes a little bit of an administrative lift off of the town um, so that you're still getting the services, but you're not having to deal with the payment aspect of it. All right, thank you. Anybody have any questions? No. Thanks, Jen. Anybody right. want to make a motion? I actually don't need a motion at this point. No. Just as long as there's consensus that people are in general support of that addition of the engagement. All right, very good. Sounds good. Uh, so we'll move on then to the update of the land use chapter. Sure. Jim, can I project and share my screen? to Jim earlier today to forward to all of you folks. So you, you have not seen this, but you have seen this. Um, what the update is, it's all of the contents of the chapter that was, has been um, in draft form for a couple of weeks at this point. The things that have been added are a small discussion, and this was just based on some of the comments from the survey. Um, to provide a little bit more history on page 10 about the um, history of the setback requirements between the residential and then the commercial industrial zones. I'm not going to read it to you, but it's only a single paragraph that has changed in the contents. And then to down at the very end, and I apologize if I'm making you dizzy. The summary of the public feedback that we got from the survey that we did back in November. Um, I've included the link with the full results in the email I sent to, Jen, or to Jim, so you'll be able to peruse all of the comments. But in short, it basically reaffirmed what came out of the 2021 survey. Um, we had 55 respondents, and the really big take backs were take were a desire to retain Newton rural character, um, open land and outdoor recreation were pretty strongly emphasized of what people were wanting more of, or how they would like to see Newton's land use change to some degree. Um, emphasizing wanting commercial businesses, when people wanted business, they generally were pushing towards things that were of less impact, um, smaller retail stores, recreation options, doctor's offices, banks, restaurants, coffee shops, mom and pop kind of shops. Many of the uses that are actually within your village district zoning, um, which is kind of nice to reiterate. Um, and then there were a good number of folks who expressed wanting to really limit any future development. And that was sort of split between commercial and residential. Um, while a good amount of others also wanted to still allow development, but they wanted it to be less impactful, whether it be those smaller commercial type uses or having things like clustered residential development so it wasn't eating up as much open space. 
those were kind of the big takeaways um, that got pulled into it. The full results and the link are also included so people can go back and reference it if they wanted to. And then the next edition were some draft recommendations and action items just to get things started. They, this does not have to be the end all. They're just some ones that sort of rose to the top and I, that we've had discussions on with the planning board. Mm -hmm. um, the big overall thing would be to recommendation one is evaluate your zoning districts to make sure that the boundaries, the uses, the different requirements within each district are actually being consistent with your master plan and are following federal and state laws. That comes into play with a variety of environmental protection, housing protections, um, and a few other changes to state and federal law, just to make sure that it's consistent. Um, so one of the actions is to review the boundaries and uses to evaluate if updates are even needed. Action number two is to identify if you need further assessment, because often if you're potentially gonna change boundaries or increase density, you want further assessment to understand what that would be. It's often a mapping exercise. Um, action three is that the town may want to conduct an economic impact study to help have an idea of what the tax impact are on if you were to build out the commercial and the commercial and industrial districts because that often changes how people may want to zone or rezone districts based on what the tax impact may potentially be. That's a more intense kind of action. Um, and then action four, and I admit I put this in as sort of a low-hanging fruit would be to update the housing master plan chapter which we're in the process of seeking a grant for you to do because you might want to have modifications to some of your zoning to allow for certain types of housing to better foster housing in certain areas or to have a different variety of housing stuff than you may currently have and that would come out as part of your housing master plan chapter um, I have drafted in who the responsible party may be. In a few cases, I've targeted select board, budget committee, farther on we'll have some other ones, some approximate timeframes, and cost if I could come up with sort of a rough estimate if I knew it, and where the funding source may come from in those cases. Hey, Jan, a quick question for me. Um, in terms yep. of these action items, um, <clears throat> what, what, what would be the process to get started with some of these next year? Um, I actually, I think one of the reasons I put in action number four is because you're already in the process of getting them started. Um, I think as far as things like reviewing the district boundaries and allowed uses, that's something that we could start to undertake a discussion once we get through the land use chapter. Um, some of them are discussions, some of them take more thought and potentially analysis to be able to make decisions about, but you can certainly get started with it in the coming months, if not year. Okay, yeah, because I would like to say to the board, I think that that should be one of the top priorities early next year is to do that review and analysis um, to get things moving once we got the land use chapter set in stone, just so that we don't forget about it. Uh, I think it's better to start it when we've got it fresh out in our mind rather than have two or three years go by and then we forget. Um, I will note that the time frames I put in here, these were meant to be sort of completion time frames, not necessarily getting started time frames. I can, I can change that heading if that would be clear. Yeah, that would be a good clarification, just to make sure that that's you know, clear to everyone yeah. that's reading. Um, moving down to recommendation two, one of the things that came out in the original master plan survey, the most recent land use survey and some of your historic documents was the desire to maintain open space and rural character, um, but and also to protect some of the resources that you have in town and to have rec more recreational opportunities. Those all kind of go part and parcel together. So I sort of combine them into one recommendation with a few action items underneath that sort of break down some of the steps um, that may want to be taken. Action item number one under this is to update your natural resource inventory. I don't offhand know the date, but I do recall it is several um, years old, if not closer to a decade plus old. 
Um, that is a document that is the responsibility of the Conservation Commission. You guys have a great Conservation Commission, but the NRI Natural Resource Inventory serves as the basic documentation of what natural resources you have in town. And it also can serve as the basis of a natural resource master plan chapter. It's about 90% of the completed chapter. The only addition is that you end up having recommendations and actions as part of it. So you kind of get two documents for one. It does require the Conservation Commission to be in coordination. You could certainly put this in the master plan. And if the Conservation Commission doesn't agree that that's a priority for them at this point, they don't have to do it. You're not obligating them to do it. Um, so action item number two would be to incorporate any open space planning that would be in the natural resource inventory into your land use regulations. So this can be so that the documents are talking to each other and help you to better protect high priority areas. So if you have wetlands that are potentially very sensitive or if you have areas for aquifer areas or wildlife habitat or things adjacent to those properties, um, this is a way that you can help to conserve them if you have things like cluster subdivisions or some of your open space planning. Action item number three. Um, the only reason I put this in there is that it's a very nice item for towns to be able to have, but it's only an as opportunity as arises that the town should pursue all opportunities to obtain recreation and open space to ensure adequate land for future residents of particular subdivisions in accordance with RSA 67536. Basically, when you have a subdivision coming up, larger ones, not two lots, but usually larger subdivisions, that's a great opportunity to um, try to ensure that there's connectivity of properties and particularly trails. So it, it's a nice little thing to have in your um, pocket for when those come up and you might have subdivisions that come up. And then recommendation three, similar to two, but kind of gets at it in a different way, is to protect existing open spaces, such as wetlands, forests, and agricultural lands from negative environmental and economic impacts of development. So basically, protect your natural resources, but still allow things to develop, but understand what those negative impacts might be. You can have quite a few action items that can fit under here. I didn't draft them because I wasn't sure how you guys might feel about this recommendation, um, but it does start to get at some of that constraint between protect things, protect open spaces, natural resources, but also allow development in town. It's You're balancing two different masters at that point. So that's the end of what I had drafted. I certainly have space for adding other things if people have thoughts, but I wanted to at least give you something to start chewing on. Annie, didn't we also draft some recommendations, in, some of which pertain to land use, or am I misremembering that? I think that those are in the vision chapter, some action items, so this, would, you, this would, should be kind of um, married with that. So I did look at the vision chapter when drafting these. These get a little bit more specific than those did because yeah. they, were, they were meant to be more visionary. So these are sort of umbrella under that. I'm certainly happy to pull in more mimicky language if you would like, um, but that was sort of the intent. Okay, that's great, Jen. No, I just wanted to make sure that that was, um, we're not recreating the wheel. We're not recreating, we're just diving down the well. Yeah. <laughs> great. Well, I think this looks good. Um, when do we need to finalize the draft by? I would love, to, if people have feedback on this, so Jim, if you could forward that email the, in the next couple of days that I sent you earlier today. Um, and if people have thoughts and you can provide them to me before the next meeting, I can do my best to incorporate those that sort of seem like they should be incorporated with my judgment and then bring any points for discussion so that we can move this forward. I think that's reasonable. And then maybe at the that's next good. meeting be able to move it to public hearing if folks are comfortable with it. I have a question. This is Barbara. Um, a lot of what you, I love what you, what you found here. A lot of these action items though include the Conservation Commission. Have we even ever spoken to the Conservation Commission about any of this or are they just going to get kind of blindsided when they say, oh, and we're supposed to do that? Um, I'm happy to send an email to them 
if you would like on your behalf to just say letting you know this is happening i will say none of this putting it in the master plan in no way obligates the conservation commission to do anything but they are the national committee in town to assist or be part of the process in getting to some of these action items i i actually think that we should kind of let them be aware of this beforehand so that they if they have any feedback like okay we can't do that or we've already thinking about that or something i just think we should get some feedback from them like i said i'm happy to send an email to them if the board is comfortable with that this I, is annie i would say i i think that's an excellent idea i think um you know everything i hear from conservation is that these are things that are kind of things they want to be thinking about and would like to work on um, the Recreation Commission, the same thing, um, to bring them into the planning process at this point and ask them for their, for their input and contributions to this. Yep, agreed. And with that, I'm all set. I would ask that people um, look at some of the comments when you have a chance from the land use survey, just so it's not just me reiterating that it seemed to echo the previous survey results. It's not, it's not, too, it's not too long of a read. I did have one more comment. This is Barbara. Um, thank you for getting rid of the columns. It's much easier to read the way you have it set up. I agree. Any other questions, comments? No, I would just encourage all members to read through it, though. Um, I know it's two weeks to the next meeting, so um, make sure to take a look at it and any comments sent through to Jen. Hey, Jen, on page 12, there's no Health Street. It's Heath Street. <laughs> ah, I could right. see <laughs> how it would get missed. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Good catch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to wait before we have a motion to um, put this for a public hearing. <clears throat> Everybody's good with that? Yep. All mm -hmm. right. So at that point, we're going to move on. Thank you, Jen, for all your help and your participation in getting this put together. We appreciate that. Um, policies and procedure manual. Is everybody good with that? Did we already sign up on it? Did we already sign off on it? Yeah, it was presented to us to read and go over and make sure everything was copacetic. I thought we had already approved it. Yeah, me too. Huh? Did we already approve it? No, no. I, at the last meeting, I asked for people to give in any feedback. Oh. Got none, so I'm assuming everything was beautiful. Uh, that's great. <laughs> However, yeah. we just want to make sure that nobody at the last minute is going to say, oh, by the way. No, I think that, that looks good. No, I think it looks fine. Th this, this can go on the uh, public hearing the same night as the land use chapter, so that we're only paying for one ad. OK. Yeah, sound good. That's fine to me. Everybody out there in TV land go with that? Sounds good to me. So that would be uh, the fourth week in January, probably? Tentatively, yeah. OK. Probably 27th. January 24th. 24th, is it? Yeah. Excuse me, yes, the 24th. All right, so everything's been gone over. Do I hear somebody making a motion to close the meeting? Motion to adjourn. Um, adjourn accepted. Now you still have the, you have to adopt the schedule. Oh, the schedule. So before we adopt the schedule, I guess in March it says on February 14th, due to town meeting, public meeting canceled. But it's in the Wait March second. column. Wait a second. Well, that would be because there'll be an election that day. In March. Yeah. Not on February. Oh, okay. It needs to be 314, not. <laughs> that's. <laughs> Those are Scrivener's errors. Those are like 214. having you on the list 
but you're, nev you, you ne you're never mentioned in the next 24 pages. <laughs> Yep. That's a Scrivener's error. I can just take that out. That, that's, oh, that's fine. I just figured. And this, this one, I, I will correct this. Okay. But yeah, I'll, I'll motion to adopt the um, meeting <clears throat> schedule or the planning board schedule. My one thing, actually, sorry, I don't mean to. <laughs> um, December 26th is going to be a very tough meeting next year, I think. I, that's where that's where it falls on the uh, on the calendar. So yeah. This year we adopted the schedule, okay. and then when we got close, we were like, "No, we're not going to need that meeting." Yeah. You know right. what I mean? Okay. Um, All right. That's what we yeah. did this year, and I didn't think there was an issue with that. No. So we can always adjust it when the time gets right. closer to it. I think he just does it the way it falls, and then we play with it. Okay. The following year, it definitely will not be held on on the day because the following year. <laughs> It would be the 25th. Okay. Very good. Let's see that. Do you need a second on that motion? I so do, I'll please. Would that be a second, Annie? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And we'll take who, a roll who call. moved it, please? I did. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Mr. Moran? He's saying Aye. yes. <laughs> Ms. White? Aye. Ms. Collier? Aye. Mr. Guide? Aye. Mr. Marshawn? Aye. Mr. Lavoie? Aye. Mr. Piper? Aye. That's, That's unanimous. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, accept, and now we can close the, the meeting. Okay, the chair can declare the meeting adjourned. He asked for a we motion. Do. And just just so everybody knows, the selectmen did not encumber the funds for the Adobe Pro, so that will have to come out of next year's budget. All right. Thank you, guys. Good night. Happy